So I'm going to stick with plaster for a little bit here and explain the process. For example, here we have the actual model for the gopher on a stump toothpick holder. And as you tour the museum, you'll probably see them or have already seen it in the miniatures section. What they would do is they take that plaster model and find out where the dividing lines would be on the plaster Paris molds and then they would draw those lines on it. Then what they would do is build it up in clay the first half and clay it up, put the box around it, take a sponge and soap it, take a paintbrush, remove the air bubbles and it's this thin layer of soap that's going to prevent the two plasters from permanently sticking together. Once that was accomplished, they'd pour the liquid plaster over it, let it solidify, flip this whole section over, remove the clay, soap it again, remove the bubbles, pour the second half, let it solidify, and you would get what we called a pattern mold. Now the pattern mold is this mold that you see in the center of the table. And from that pattern mold, they'd make up what we call the blocks and the cases, or your master molds. And here you see the master molds for the gopher on a stump toothpick holder. There's two of them because it's a two-piece mold. And you see this right here and here's the other half over here. They'd soap that up with soap as well, remove the air bubbles. They'd put the two sides together, take a rubber band, put them together, pour the liquid plaster into it, make the two halves, and make the Plaster Paris production molds. They'd make up approximately 300, 350 of those, and they'd let them dry and they'd send, and once they were dry, they'd send them down to what they called the casting department. And in the casting department, what they did is they poured liquid clay slip into the plaster Paris mold. The plaster Paris absorbs the moisture out of the liquid clay, adhering to the sides of the molds and making the form that was going to be produced. Once it reached the desired thickness, which is determined by the amount of time you leave that liquid clay in the mold, they'd pour the excess off and you'd get what we call the greenware. Here's the example, and we have the badger on a football, and in here you can see the greenware that was actually produced out of that mold. They'd let that dry, remove it, take a sponge, remove the seam lines, send it down to the firing department where it went through the tunnel kilns and was fired for a period of a minimum of 24 hours. And from that, you would get your bisque. And here's an example of the bisque here with the magnolia bud vase and that's when it actually became pottery. Once it was bisque, you were waiting the glazing process. For those of you that have gone through the museum and seen the dinnerware, for example, the dinnerware was fired three times. It was fired in the greenware, and once it was fired in the greenware and made into the bisque, you heard about how the painters would take and put that bisque onto the assembly line, and each one of the hand painters had their stroke, and they'd paint that stroke in, in underglazes. And once it started and went to the end of the line, at the end of the line, the process was completed, and you had your underglazes done. Then that was fired again. Once that was fired, then it was either sprayed, dipped, or brushed with the clear glazes. 
fired for the third time and that gave you the smooth eating surface from which you had the plate to eat off from. So that's a quick overview of the process. Now, however, everything wasn't as simple as a two-piece mold. I'd like to go back to the cowboys now. For example, the molds that you see underneath the four cowboys here, it took those molds to produce the cowboy on the right-hand side. The body was poured separately, the cowboy hat was poured separately, the two arms rolling the smoke were poured separately, and the knee that's a jutting out was poured separately. And they'd take those clay pieces, then they'd take a paintbrush, dip it in clay, put it onto the piece that's going to be attached, and at the location it was going to be attached, and then they'd stick them together. And once they were stuck together, they were left to be dried. They'd take a sponge, remove those seam lines, and then run it through the firing process.